Matthew Bell here with Alzheimer'sProof.com, and today I wanted to discuss an article that crossed my radar screen on a correlation between Alzheimer's disease and napping. So this goes back to an article that was published in the Journal of Alzheimer's and Dementia back in August of 2019. I'm recording this now in October of 2019. The findings were reported in diverse places from the USA Today, which is where I saw it. It's also on WebMD and a variety of other websites. So here's uh, the, the crux of the matter. In brief, the brain controls everything, right? The brain controls our body functions, it controls wakefulness, and it controls sleeping. But Alzheimer's and other forms of dementia, but in particular Alzheimer's disease is a brain degenerating disease. The idea here is actually twofold, but the basic concept is that Alzheimer's disease ravages and destroys those portions of the brain that are responsible for healthy sleep. And this can result in a condition where a person who has Alzheimer's disease is going to require more sleep during the day and is not going to get as good of a quality sleep during the night. Now the culprit is alleged to be something called a tau protein. I've discussed in other videos different hypothetical causes for Alzheimer's disease, and one of the very prominent correlations that you read about in the various literature is Alzheimer's disease is characterized by the accumulation of a bunch of gunky deposits inside the brain. This junk disrupts brain communication, it disrupts nerve cells or neurons, it can destroy memory, reasoning ability, perception, and so on. Well, these deposits are largely composed of two different things. The first is what's called amyloid protein, and the second is tau protein. Now, in terms of Alzheimer's studies, amyloid or beta amyloid proteins have been fairly widely studied. They've issued in a variety of pharmaceutical interventions that have attempted to sort of bust them up to try to see if the Alzheimer's would be treatable. Nothing has so far proven successful. But in this study, the researchers have identified tau protein as a main culprit in the disruption of this kind of sleep that uh, we talked about in the introduction. Now, what researchers discovered is that this sort of effect that tau protein has in Alzheimer's is different from the way in which other dementias progress. So this kind of sleep disruption due to the tau protein is supposed to be fairly unique to Alzheimer's, at least as far as researchers know at the present time. There's really two things going on. The first thing is basically this. Alzheimer's destroys those portions of the brain that keep us awake. The second thing is, Alzheimer's also destroys those portions of the brain that help us to get restful sleep during the night. So if the portions of the brain are destroyed or are severely compromised that keep us awake during the day, people tend to be sleepier. And if those portions of the brain are compromised that tend to give us more restful sleep, people tend to be sleepier. The upshot is that Alzheimer's patients are going to have disrupted sleep patterns, and this has been identified and is fairly well believed and understood from other studies. This particular study was conducted on a sample set of, I think, 20 different brains, so this is autopsies now, deceased individuals who had 13 of them out of the 20 had Alzheimer's disease and 7 out of the 20 did not. And they basically compared the tissue and the aggregation of these tau protein deposits where they were in the brain and that kind of thing. This research suggests that excessive napping could be a sign of the early onset of Alzheimer's disease. And as I just said, in general, people with Alzheimer's disease tend to have disrupted sleep patterns anyway. They may wake up in the middle of the night. They may fall asleep in the middle of the day. They might have trouble falling asleep at night and yet have shallow sleep, not as deep of a sleep, and wake up periodically in the middle of the night. I know my dad, Jim, who died of Alzheimer's disease in 2016, had horrible sleep patterns. It was very difficult for us to keep tabs on him because in the middle of the night, he would be walking around, he would fall asleep on the couch at odd times instead of in his bed. We would have trouble, obviously keeping a work schedule or other things is very difficult when you're trying to care for somebody who has Alzheimer's disease, but in particular it's difficult when your sleep schedule is fairly normal and their sleep schedule is highly erratic. So additionally, Alzheimer's disease is associated with increased napping during the day. What's interesting is some of these sleep disturbances may become apparent before any kind of memory disruption is observed. So they may be some of the earliest symptoms of Alzheimer's disease. Now this is also associated with something called sundowning. Sundowning is variously defined, but one definition of it would be a sort of sleepiness or a, set of, a fatigue that sets in around late afternoon or early evening. 
Another way of thinking of it is confusion that sets in. So with an Alzheimer's afflicted individual, their being fatigued may prompt them to be more confused, more disoriented than they otherwise are, and that can be a considerable thing to say. Now, what is in view here, essentially, when we're thinking about an early detection of Alzheimer's disease is a change in sleep pattern. Several articles were at pains to say to, to, to readers not to worry if you are in a habit of napping during the day or if that's part of your routine. Maybe that's not cause for alarm if you do it because you're trying to make yourself more alert for business meetings or something. But what's in view here is a change and what's also in view is an inability to stay awake during the day rather than just simply deciding to take a cat nap. Strictly speaking, as far as I can tell, uh, healthy adults do not usually require, require they don't need to have a nap during the day. But that doesn't mean that they can't benefit from a power nap, 15 minutes, 30 minutes, possibly can be used strategically for any number of purposes, from preparing for an examination, maybe you're in college, to doing your best at a sporting event, engaging in some artistic or creative endeavor, or having to complete some work-related task just to make sure that your concentration, your focus, your energy level, your enthusiasm, and all kinds of things are at their peak. Not uncommon to, to just take a short uh, rest. Healthy adults might also require sleep during the day if they are ill or if they're on vacation and they just decide they want to take some extra time and, and rest. Seniors, even healthy seniors, may require an hour of a nap as an assist to their flagging energy. And so this may be just a regular part of what's called normal physical or cognitive aging. But it also might be an indication of something more serious. I am, of course, not a doctor. I'm not a medical professional of any kind. I cannot give you medical advice, and none of, none of the information in this video should be construed as medical advice. This is not a diagnosis. This is not a treatment plan or of any kind. You need to consult with your physician if you have any concerns along these lines, or if you might be concerned about relatives or loved ones. Now, there are numerous changes that you might be able to implement in your life in order to support healthy sleep patterns. In a subsequent video, I will go more in depth into some of these and describe them, but for the present time, I'll just kind of map the terrain a little bit to give you an idea. One thing will be lighting changes. The brighter the light, the more difficult it is generally to go to sleep. Uh, fairly intuitive. We are sort of wired from a biological, physiological point of view to be awake during the day and to sleep at night. And so different hormone levels, for example, melatonin, are kind of keyed in on the amount of light. There are also issues with respect to the kind of light. So for example, blue shifted light is supposed to keep us awake more than red shifted light. So turn off your screens, turn off television sets and things like this because they can disrupt a person's ability to fall asleep. It also might be helpful to modify activity levels or to modify the timing of various activities. So for example, light exercise might be good for a senior whose uh, energy level is flagging a little bit. Would also be good to time these appropriately so you don't generally want to engage in strenuous workout right before bed because you're going to be ramped up and it's going to be more difficult to fall asleep. That kind of activity would be better suited for early morning, afternoon, some other earlier time of day. Various dietary changes might be recommended. For some people there are certain foods that might make it more difficult to fall asleep there are small amounts, for example, of caffeine in chocolate. There's caffeinated beverages, coffee, certain uh, types of uh, pop or soda, certain types of soft drinks. There are also various sleep-promoting herbs. Now, anybody who's watched this channel for any length of time or has stumbled across any of the videos or have seen the website know that herbs are a kind of a, an interest uh, that I have. So I will go more in depth in this regard in another video. There are a number of herbs that have reputations as calming agents or as sleep promoters. Lemon balm, for example, skullcap, valerian. Then there are other supplements. Melatonin sometimes can be supplemented with. Ultimately, a person who has very disrupted sleep patterns may want to explore the possibility of using sleep promoting medications. Again, this is gonna be a conversation you need to have with your doctor or with your loved one's doctor it should be a conversation. I cannot give you any kind of advice along the lines of this. I can simply point you in a certain direction, perhaps. Ultimately, this video is about the research that suggests that excessive napping can be an early warning sign of Alzheimer's disease. 
So if you notice any changes in sleep patterns for your loved one, it might be a good idea to encourage them to see a physician, get checked out. There are various cognitive uh, tests that can be administered, the mini mental state examination, for example. There are other kinds of tests that can be run to try to get a handle on whether or not there is some cognitive impairment there. I get into the stages of Alzheimer's disease in another video, but I would simply say that you want, anytime you can catch something, you can sort of start to administer supports and helps that can make caretaking less challenging and can make the experience for the afflicted person a little bit better. If something that I said in this video was of interest to you or was of help to you, I would ask that you like the video, subscribe to the channel, and check back in for future content. Thank you so much.